Hello and welcome to another episode of What Happened, the show people are calling, why do these stupid videos keep showing up in my recommendations? <coughs> well, I'll tell you why. We have another tragically twisted video game table flipper to talk about today. So without further ado, step in through our doors because we're open for business. Now, we've covered first-person shooters before, a lot, and that's because it's a bottomless pit of controversies, overhyping, and big dumb engine problems. So with that in mind, Blood 2. Okay, if we're gonna dig up the grave of the cult classic series that is Blood, well, you can't not bring up Monolith Productions as well. No, no, not that Monolith, no. It, yeah, yeah, that one. They're responsible for a number of innovative and unique franchises in the fine art of first-person shooting, with things like Fear, No One Lives Forever, AVP2, and Condemned, among others. This, of course, was before they were banished to the Mines of Moria in 2012. You know, some say if you listen to the wind, you can still hear them working on Lord of the Rings games to this day, which they'll be doing until they pass into the Grey Havens. Back in the heaving bosom of a year that was 1997, however, Monolith released what some consider the best shooter on the build engine, Blood. It starred the trench coat wearing, six shooting, catchphrase spouting Caleb. Ooh, just me. On a revenge mission against his former patron saint or demon, delightfully named Chernabog. Now, while not a massive hit by any stretch, especially compared to the other build engine boys, it quickly gained a cult following. Yeah, cult. Totally unintentional, right right there in the script. Now, while Blood was developed by the fine folks at Monolith, it was published by the lesser fine folks at GT Interactive, a name that might be familiar among the old school FPS fanbase. We'll get to them in a bit. Oh, oh yes, we will. Now, in the end credits of Blood, a sequel was indeed hinted at, but with the advent of 3D engines in the late 90s, most of Monolith were developing one of their own, Direct Engine, which would later become LithTech. Originally, the technology was being made in partnership with Microsoft, but Monolith themselves would purchase the rights to it from Microsoft, so the deal, as you can expect, uh, kind of exploded. LithTech would then power the a uh, master class in storytelling that was Shogo Mobile Armor Division. Sorry, Commander, this area is off limits. Yeah, whatever. I have my order, sir. Please be nice to me. GT Interactive, however, wanted an immediate sequel to Blood. And when I say immediate, I mean right the fuck now. Okay, so to be more accurate, the mandate that GT handed down was that Blood 2 needed to be on store shelves in 11 months. This publisher thought it was feasible to produce a full sequel on a brand new 3D engine that had both single and multiplayer in less than a year. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, aside from that, things were kicking off incredibly poorly elsewhere within the company, with one Nick Newhard, the main designer of Blood One, quitting Monolith to look for work elsewhere, with his duties passing on to one James Wilson III, a level designer on Blood One. To help speed along the process, Monolith, specifically one of its founding members, Jace Hall, decided to turn to the fans on the official Blood forums to ask their opinion on major design decisions for the sequel, and would then use said feedback to help shape the game. I sure could use a drink. Th this is shaping up to be primo what happened material already, isn't it? Now, the original plan was for the Shogo team to wrap up their work and join in on the development of Blood 2 so as to hopefully make that aggressive release date. However, Shogo's development dragged on later than intended, so this whole plan here, yeah, it didn't work out. In fact, both games wound up releasing within two months of each other, so unfortunately, cooperation didn't really make it happen. Now, while this wasn't detrimental to Shogo since it had a longer dev cycle, it was extremely detrimental to Blood 2 because, well, if it wasn't, I wouldn't be talking right now. Shogo was planned and mapped out years before, but a sequel to Blood wasn't even supposed to exist as it was GT that suddenly asked for a follow-up. Therefore, the team, in a 
frantic panic, decided to ask blood fans or bloodites for help. Jace Hall cites this as a move that ultimately damaged the perception of the final product as it created unrealistic expectations that they had low chances of meeting. He explains, Monolith made its share of bad decisions that contributed to Blood 2's reception, overambitious game design, and unchecked team communication with the fans, i.e. a lot of promises got made by Blood 2 team members that probably shouldn't have. What type of promises? Uh, well, stupid ones. Initially, four-player online co-op was being thrown around, which would have caused the minds of lesser men to explode in 1998. The single-player, Bloods, Meat, and Potatoes, was originally going to feature multiple objectives with several different solutions, which would all then be connected via main hub world so as to expand the scope and immersiveness of the game. As you could surmise, all of this never happened. It all makes for a hilarious tragedy, however, when you read the musings of James Wilson during Blood 2's development. All the levels are goal-based, with no key hunting, and advance the story appropriately. You will have very well-defined reasons for being where you are and fairly involved goals, some of which will be vastly divergent from your typical run and gun. You will also be able to freely move back and forth between levels, but we are taking great pains to make sure that is not cumbersome. Well, it's certainly easy not to make backtracking cumbersome when there's no backtracking at all, as that entire concept was soon abandoned. With that said, Blood 2 also features tons of key collecting and switch pulling, pretty much everything you expect from a standard run and gun at the time. What's more, the complex multi-layered map design of the original was also cast aside in lieu of something far, far more linear. Since the Blood 2 team already had their hands full designing their first 3D game ever, reinventing the wheel on mission and level design was not really in the cards. To ship it in 11 months, they needed to simplify, not complexify. In the same spirit, Blood 2's arsenal was also a victim of simplifying, as 30 weapons were originally promised leading up to launch, a considerable jump over its predecessor's paltry 11. This of course was then redacted when James Wilson chimed in, letting Bloodites know that there would be some cuts. Since I see regular posts on the Blood forum about the number of weapons in B2, I'll make it official. We've cut a few weapons from that original list of 30. Some were cut because of time, but most were cut because of redundancy and game balance. Basically, we eliminated any weapons that didn't serve a unique function, seemed out of place, etc. Our trimmed down list now consists of 21 weapons. Mission design and shooting mechanics weren't the only thing that suffered, as they also promised in-game cutscenes to deliver most of the story. While those wound up being mostly really static camera shots that were made really cheaply with 90% of the actual story coming in the form of just text during the loading screens, which of course loaded too fast in the original launch version of the game, not even giving players enough time to read them. Now, the story of Blood 1 wasn't much more elaborate than most FPSs of the time, featuring one opening FMV that looked like this. And yeah, that, that was about it. It was a simple revenge tale against a weird monster. James Wilson, however, felt Blood 2 needed lots of story and was determined to cram it in, whether fans wanted it or not. One of the main design aspects that was put forward to Bloodites in a vote asked if they wanted a game that focused solely on Caleb and featured an elaborate narrative, or if they wanted a game that had four selectable characters but had less story. Since Caleb had endeared himself to the fans via Blood 1, the former was obviously chosen. However, inexplicably, the latter was also chosen. Yeah, for whatever reason, maybe Monolith had already decided on it, but the rest of the selectable characters were still added as selectable characters and had no storyline or cutscenes unique to them. Which means that the game originally had an all-encompassing storyline told across the perspectives of all four characters, but since Monolith was running out of time, they decided to put it to a vote. 
The narrative elements from Ishmael, Gabriella, and Ophelia's campaigns were simply stripped out, which was bad as they filled in the plot holes of Caleb's story. By making this last minute decision to cut out their storylines, the entire narrative made less sense and was pretty unfulfilling on the whole. What's more is that certain motivations and origins were purposefully left vague or unanswered because Monolith assumed GT Interactive would want a third title eventually, which, you know, they they didn't. Great robbers. So despite being sorta of given power in that area, something the fans had zero power over was the aesthetic and time period that the game took place in. Blood quenched a thirst that other FPSs of the late 90s didn't even bother with. Pulpy turn of the century horror. Zombies, demons, cultists, graveyards, and all other manner of boo haunted house. Blood 2, however, decided to place itself in the far future, about 100 years after the first game. This meant that most of the levels and world fell right in line with a lot of its competitors. Things like Unreal, Sin, or Quake 2. Many of the aspects that had become synonymous with the franchise now needed to clear the way for people in suits, soldiers, and various types of mutated generic atrocities. Along with this change to a more by-the-numbers aesthetic in the level art was a de-emphasis on the humor and charm from the first game. Despite its horror trappings, the original Blood played with the setting in a more tongue-in-cheek fashion, but The Chosen, while not completely eliminated Caleb's quips, definitely took itself a bit more seriously, again making it feel similar in tone to the other shoot bangs, and in 1998, there were plenty of those. With so many things cut or changed, where does that leave what was actually left in the game? Well, there were bugs. Lots and lots of bugs. They ran the gamut from crashes, progression blockers, to enemies jibbing when being shot with a pistol, AI being too aggressive and simultaneously too stupid, often running into walls and losing the player, severed limbs would just get stuck all over the level geometry, death ray beams would hang in the air, it was all just so underdeveloped, so uncooked, it was just so fucking wrong! Hey kids, Civvy here. <clears throat> I hereby endorse the usage of this Gordon Ramsay clip, which is my own intellectual property and creation that I have received the appropriate amount of monetary compensation for said use. Thank you. And now back to you, Mr. Uh, Big Bumbles or whatever the fuck your name is. Pay me. Okay, so we've seen that, yeah, the game needed a little polish. Or about 30,000 cans of industrial strength polish all shot directly at the source code from Orbit. The quotes leading up to the release from James Wilson, however, are finger licking good in their absurdity for two reasons. One, due to the abundance of 90s slang, and two, due to how fucking wrong they were. Got done a huge release candidate build for GT yesterday. The AI is looking a lot more pimp as well as deadly. Most navigation issues are taken care of while keeping low tick counts and no scripting. Attacking tactics have been beefed up. The AI will deal and react to stuff like gunfire, bullet impacts nearby, differences in height, ledges, distance, damage, and ammo amounts. I can't even make it through a bunch of the levels and they aren't even done. The AI plays with the same restrictions and constraints as the player, so there is none of that whack-ass bot crap like an Unreal. It is tough but reasonable and also believable, and the best of all is that the AI is scary. <laughs> oh my god, I, I got misty-eyed just reading that. It's crystal clear by now that Monolith wanted to release a massive, ambitious game running on the new engine and for it to be as good as possible. However, when it became apparent the game was going to miss those lofty goals within the thin time frame that GT Interactive had laid down, they pleaded for a delay and more money to get the job done. Jace Hall explains, Blood 2 is not Monolith's product, it is GT Interactive's product. GT owns everything related to the Blood franchise. It bothers us that Blood 2 happened the way it did, but GT controlled whether additional work and support got done for it or not. Now, some fans might think that Monolith could have just gone on and fixed Blood 2 if we really wanted to. Not true. We were at the end of the production cycle, with a product that could really benefit from some patchwork. Monolith had no say in that but we all felt that we needed to do something. Thus, the Nightmare Levels add-on pack was born. 
both Monolith and GT had the idea to build a simple add-on pack, something that GT was willing to pay for, and during that time we would use some of the money they gave us to work on a Blood 2 patch. This sorta of worked as we were able to fix some things, but the bottom line was that Blood 2 was going to need a lot more money if we were going to get it to a truly polished state. So after all this was done, GT, having other internal financial issues, pretty much decided that they were done with the Blood franchise. They were not interested in spending any more money on that property at all, end of story. The Nightmare Levels was Monolith's attempt to right the wrongs of the game, and implemented some fan service that people had been asking for. It featured more levels akin to the original, such as a hedge maze and a carnival, reintroduced the robed cultists, and like Mr. Hall said, had some, but sadly not enough bug fixes and polish to really make it shine. Now, if GT Interactive were so keen to publish Blood 2 in the first place, why did they abandon it so soon? Why were there no console ports to hopefully make some extra cash? Well, that was all due to the impending buyout from Infogrames that happened just a year later. The buyout that GT Interactive never told Monolith about. See, GT execs started greenlighting everything they could in a short period of time, hoping to make enough cash for themselves before they were swallowed up by the bigger and Frencher publisher. This is much like how Fox farted out a pointless PG-13 cut of Deadpool 2 before the buyout from Disney was made official. Make your money while you still can. Jace Hall also revealed that they never saw a profit from the finished game, as the lion's share all went to GT Interactive. This then put them in a difficult position. Why risk their own time and their own money to fix a game that only their publisher would see dividends for? Instead, Monolith focused on the future, such as the No One Lives Forever franchise, which they 100% owned at the time. Monolith never received a single dollar from any Blood 2 sale. Never. Monolith did not put Blood 2 on the shelf and then collect a fee. That was GT. If Blood 2 sold through the roof, GT would have made all the money. Our royalty was never going to see the light of day. Maybe we could have made some money off Blood 2 after it sold 600,000 copies, but I knew there was no way that was going to happen. I feel really bad for the gamers that bought Blood 2 and were unable to have fun due to bugs. I wish it didn't happen this way, but there was nothing I could do. GT wasn't interested in paying for more development, and I was not going to send 65 families to the unemployment line just so that there could be smoother online multiplayer or AI that wouldn't get stuck in walls sometimes. That was my decision to make, and I own up to it. If you want to blame anyone for that decision, then blame me. I'm the CEO. Basically, Blood 2 just needed more time. Time costs money, and Monolith didn't have a business model with the Blood 2 project that could justify additional work. GT needed to step up, and really, they should have, because at the end of the day, it was their game that was being sold. Nowadays, Infowatari Grames still owns the Blood IP, and while they did absolutely nothing with it over the course of 20 years, the remastered Blood Fresh Supply via Night Dive Studios made it incredibly accessible for generations new and old to experience. Maybe in the future we could very well see a fully realized, polished version of Blood 2 The Chosen, or even a full sequel if the old gods allow it. Until then, dear viewer, we will patiently wait to see if Caleb pulls on his battered old duster and loads up his sawed off one more time. I live again. So, if you know of any other bad, middling, or controversial video game crap bombs, throw a bundle of dynamite on the comments below, or raise the dead over at the Flophouse VIP Patreon to officially vote on our next subject that won't be Advent Rising. See you next time, kids, and thanks for watching.